Hello, I'm Bob Ross Fan 98 and this is my OC. Please do not steal. This is one of the characters for a video game I've been working on. This is a game about a guy named Kenny who finds himself in a spooky town where you will have to solve puzzles and face monsters. A little like Silent Hill. He even has that thing from Silent Hill where the monsters are embodied representations of players' traits and past experiences. Like Silent Hill's monster, Abstract Daddy. Some manifestation of a girl's rape and abuse by her hands of her father and brother or some shit. And Flesh Lips, a monster symbolizing James' wife saying mean things to him before she died. Or the most grotesque and frightening monster of all, Wheelchair. They symbolize abandonment issues, problems possible, and being alone. I wouldn't say my monsters will be as complex as symbolizing past experiences of the character, my monsters just represent negative or having negative connotation psychological traits. This character here is Wrath, representing Kennedy's anger for hats. I'm not sure why I picked a Wendigo to represent anger. In folklore, Wendigo represent a monster of greed, gluttony, the greed of food, and causing imbalances in nature. So in times of famine, these people will tell others not to eat others because they will destroy the balance in their tribe and become a monster of immeasurable power. I guess it was the daunting look of the Wendigo I liked. Hey, so we got a bit uh, hot in my room, I had to open up the window. So now you're going to be able to hear all the sounds of nature, the birds chirping, the cars guzzling, and the branches, and the breeze. So let's get back to the script I writ up for this video to do forced commentary to make it seem more interesting. They are pretty intimidating, but they don't seem ferocious, at least not until they're eating someone. From the art I've seen, they look to be cold and silent. Of course, I couldn't get a feel for how it is from people's art, and the little I've read about them didn't talk about it either. But I think my idea works for its part in my game. I could have used a monster that actually looks angry all the time, but I feel that something or someone that is usually calm and silent, getting angry when they really do, can be much more frightening than someone with a short temper. It's like, hey, Tim's getting angry and starting shit. Yeah, he gets angry all the time like a little bitch. Or, hey, Phil is angry and starting shit. Wow, Phil never acts in anger. This must be some real serious shit. And it gives the feel of growing power. Imagine this guy slowly getting more embers and going into flames. I think that would be pretty cool. The interesting thing I found when thinking of these characters is that it's much easier to come up with ideas for the character by looking at the random things you give them. So I make this character to symbolize anger, and my idea of anger is a catalyst to make a choice. Anger has a bad rep because we only know about bad choices coming from anger, like violence or whatever, but many things done for justice were fueled by anger to do them. We also get angry because we feel threatened, either to our way of life or whatever. With this character, making on fire was a random thing that I just thought would look cool, but later it gave me the idea of having the flames represent that catalyst, the fire under the feet. Then I thought, because he's always silent and not always on fire, He's getting angry for a reason, and not just angry for no reason all the time. I decided that his reason for getting angry at the player is because the player threatens his comfort. He just wants to chill with the wildlife and eat some flesh. So yeah, to help you come up with ideas for a character, give them some random characteristics, and think of what you can make from that. Well shucks, looks like I ran out of shit to talk about on this script. But let's see what else I can come up with until this video is done. Damn, that audio voiceover was like only about 4 minutes, and how long is this video going to be? Like, I think about 30 minutes. Yeah. Shit. My inability to talk slowly is kind of being a hindrance here. Uh, what can I talk about? So, I uh, had a little conversation with one of my old friends, or possibly not a friend anymore. We don't talk at all. Probably that friendship fire is probably uh, burnt out. Yeah, so I met him in my old high school. One, the one I only did freshman year in. Then I moved to fucking Texas. Uh, yeah, I had a video game making class with him. It was, it's not that very good of a class. Like, it's basically like just froze in front of fucking Game Maker. And like be like, hey, make some games. And, uh, fucking I was in brony stage around there, so I was making, obviously, pony-ass games. 
Uh, I think they were pretty cool, though. Like, I had little unicorn fuckers do some magic bullshit. Like, there's no special effects, of course. I just, like, made the ability for the little horsey thing to uh, levitate items and junk. Like, what is it? Like, you press a button once you're in front of a box, then you get the option to move that box around in some limited space, or maybe it wasn't limited. Anyways, so I, uh, about maybe a month ago, a week ago, oh, time's com- convoluted, I can't remember, uh, time and shit, I don't have that sensor in my head, I don't even know the order of the months. So I was talking to him, and I was like, hey, dude, and of course he's like, who's this? And uh, he said, who I am? My name, Marcus. And he's like, oh, oh, hey, what's up? Or maybe he didn't say what's up. He didn't seem very interested. Just tell him I'm making a video game. And uh, he's like, oh, what kind of video game is it? Is it, uh, what were they? Uh, first person puzzle platformer uh, sandbox? Uh, what, what is it? And I told him it's basically, well, I said I would have three games and they would be uh, different types. First one would be kind of 1D because it'll be a uh, typing game, kind of like Zork, you know? Be like Zork where you just type out what you want to happen and you'll read what happens in the scenario. Then uh, the second game would be a 2D game uh, over the shoulder, kind of... Kind of looking like it was made in RPG Maker, maybe, but uh, I'm not sure. I think I might want to, instead of having them look very short and blocky, think want them to be kind of tall, like elongated, like not not little small pixel people, but kind of like actually show uh, even out proportions. Uh, then the third one would, of course, be a 3D game. Uh, excuse me, where we pull up all the stops and uh, make it all super cool with a lot of action and shit. And for whatever reason, oh yeah, I forgot. I said I want to do that because I like the idea of showing the evolution of games and going from the 1D to 3D. thought that would have been a really cool idea to demonstrate to people. So after telling him this, he says, uh, that's not going to work. It's going to flop. Or whatever. I'm like, hey, why? Why Why would that flop? That's a pretty cool idea. Like, what do you guys think that's a cool idea? Just have your first game be a very basic 1D game. And just work up to the 3D game. And he says it would have been better to have all the games in one. Uh, as in, just have one game. Where inside of that one game, it starts off as a 1D to... And it evolves to 3D. Or maybe just 2D. He didn't seem very keen on the 1D said that would have worked and apparently there has been a video game has done that and it has been successful uh, i asked him for the name for it but he couldn't remember interestingly enough uh that was actually one of my ideas for my idea for my original idea of the game that was going to be based off of my life creating a video game which i later found out there's already a video game about doing that which was kind of a bummer but, uh, you know, that's that's how uh, creativity works. You can't be uh, original in creativity. Every, everything's already been created. You're just uh, adding variation to it. So he says uh, I should have it all in one. And I explain to him, like, I can't do that because the coding would be different. Like, obviously coding, that is an excuse for why I couldn't do it. Because the other game does it. But like I'm trying to say the reason I want to do that is because I want the coding and such to be unique to each game part. Because I want to uh, express fully uh, each of the unique characteristics that go with each of those game types. Like what is it? A 1D game that's all just words. You can have pretty much unlimited potential in what you can do in that game. Like, sure you can't visualize it, but that's what your imagination is for. And it works pretty well in Zork. What was it? He was saying, uh, Zork, or no, what was it? 
he was saying that my game in 1D, the text base, I think it's called, uh, would have been as versatile. Maybe I'm not sure what he, what he said. Uh, it was on Steam chat, so of course I can't go back and see everything he said to me. But he said it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to uh, do much in a 1D game in a text based game as he was comparing it to Zork, but I'm not going to have it exactly like Zork. I plan to be able to uh, adapt to the game. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, and taste the chips. Uh, I want a text-based game where you can do as much as you want, or not do as much as you want, but have the freedom and ability to try to do as much as you can. Here's another one coming up. <sighs> yeah, I should probably drink some water. Uh, yeah, so I kind of plan, it, it's probably going to be a challenging thing, but I would like for, if I ever do, hopefully release the game, the text-based game, is for people to try to do whatever they like in the game, and if the game doesn't have a uh, outcome for the choice they made, I will get some uh, analytic reports or whatever it's called, get some, have some kind of a uh, thingy in the game that tells you all the things they did, you know, to mess with their privacy and stuff, whatever. Check all that, bring it to a server, to my computer, whatever, maybe. Yeah, probably. Unless I can fucking afford the game to be sending information to a server that I rent. I doubt that, though, so it just comes to my tiny computer, which will probably be filled quickly and wouldn't be able to do much work, but I'll try. They'll send the things that the people tried to do to my computer, and I see uh, what it is, and I decide to try to code that into the game and uh, have it update it to the game that they're playing, so next time they try to use it, the game's like, hey, you can totally use this now. Is that gonna be very, uh, what's the word? Cumbersome? I'm not sure, but, or tedious. Yeah, tedious, maybe that works. Be very tedious to incorporate a new type of action each time someone tries a new thing. I think it's kind of worth it to be able to give people the ability to try virtually anything they want in this video game. Yeah. So I asked him what would be a... Uh, what, what would... What would his thoughts be if I, uh, instead of doing the whole evolution thing, like, just forget the whole evolution thing, what would you see wrong with my game? <laughs> oh, fuck, excuse me. That's gross. I need some water. Stay hydrated with that HO201. <sighs> Thirst has been quenched. Okay, what was I talking about? Yeah, I asked him, uh, just, just fucking forget about this whole evolution thing. Because you aren't really making any sense. Like, I was explaining, like, other games. They've evolved. Like, Risk of Rain, they started with a really, really fucking awesome 2D game. Like, holy shit, get Risk of Rain. That game is fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, fuck. Especially on three monitors, oh god. Wish wish I had fucking... Wish all my three monitors were the same size instead of having two 1080s and one, uh, what was it? 1028 by 1028. I think that's the square monitors. The four by three. <sighs> what was I at? Um. Shit, I lost track. Oh yeah, like I'm asking like, wh why, why would I be failing... When these other games do it, like Risk Rain, they have their two, their cool 2D uh, side platformer roguelike, I think it's called. Yeah, ro rogue for when it has generally prestige it stuff. Well, it's not, it's not generally prestige it. Like the items and stuff are, but the rooms are. Uh, well, whatever it is, where it has random enemies and shit. 
Uh, that started as 2D side platformer type deal, and now they're making a uh, 3D one with Unity, I think. I don't, looks like they're using something pretty basic for you to make it, and uh, that that looks really cool. I really want to get that. And also, forget to also mention to him, what about fucking older games like uh, Final Fantasies or the Mario games that started in that 2D shit? They went to a 3D or whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's because they took a long time and made many games in between before they went to the next evolution, possibly. Yeah, so, like, one of the reasons he gave for saying it's a bad idea to do the whole evolution thing with each next iteration of the game is he's saying that I would lose audience. He, I guess, thinks that there's going to be people who are, like, really hardcore fans of the text-based or the 2D and be like, no, I don't want to evolve to the 2D or the 3D shit. I want my uh, classics. F- fuck these noobs. Uh, get on my level with this old shit. I, I did see an example of that when looking at the video for the new Risk of Rain 3D development. There Alpha, beta, I think it was alpha, uh, development video. There were people who were like, oh, this, why are you making it 3D, making it look way more easier now, which makes no sense. How, how is being, like, what's our field of view? I think someone in the comments said 180, uh, field of view in front of you. How is only having that view of stuff in front of you when there can be multiple enemies surround you on all your blind blind spots from on your s- to the sides behind your ears wherever the blind spot is be- directly behind you and even above you you can have multiple enemies and not see them how is that easier than being able to see all the enemies surrounding you when you're looking at your character from the side on a flat uh 2d image that makes no sense then, yeah, there's there's just a couple people, like, was it just very select few in the comments of this video that complained about some 3D game? No, no idea why. I, I don't know. Maybe they just like how basic the 2D game is. I, I like that too, but I would like to uh, explore uh, more and what that game can do in 3D and stuff. Uh, what else was there? Yeah, so, uh, he says one of the reasons the, uh, 1D, the, uh, text-based Zork-like, or Zorg, Zork or Zorg, one of those, he said that wouldn't work because it's a very niche, uh, audience market for text-based games, and I, I understand that, like, before going on and writing the stuff for this, uh, text-based game, I went on, U- I mean, not YouTube, but, uh, Steam, and look at text-based games to see if there actually are text-based games selling on Steam, and, uh, yeah, yeah, there's people sell, people selling those games and people buying, like, that was things I first needed to check to see if I would actually get any money from making a, uh, text-based game, like, I understand it's a niche market about the best games, or not the best games, but the most popular text-based games on Steam, uh, average a total of a hundred, uh, reviews. Like, I don't know if, uh, that's equal amount of how many purchases, because fucking Steam, the uh, developers and, what was it? Develop, no, not developers or producers, uh, but the, the people who sell it, what, publishers, yeah, publishers, uh, they don't like disclosing how many sales they made because of whatever fucking stupid business practice. I, I don't know, because maybe someone sees they're selling a lot of copies and then they're like, hey, I'm going to copy their game because I see that their game was a cash cow or some shit. So, I don't know. But I do know that there's about a hundred people reviewing the most popular ones. Or, or no, they're, I don't know if they're most popular. I'm just saying that they that the games that have the most reviews only have about a hundred reviews, is what I'm trying to say, so I, I'm guessing those are most popular. And, uh, yeah, so I understand it's very niche, 
and I won't get many very very many cells on it. But uh, that's not something I'm very worried about because the first game is just a test thing. It's just you know getting my feet in the water or whatever, getting toes to feet to ankles and all that in the water to uh, know if my uh, game can stay afloat or whatever. <sighs> Just, just imagine if I was in a uh, business, a team, and had other developers working with me, and uh, we were about to make our first game and didn't really know what would make a good game. I would say it's best for us to do a very inexpensive basic game, such as TextBase, that uses very basic codes. Like, imagine... Uh, you don't know how to make a game, or you do know how to make a game, or I, I guess don't. You're you're trying to make a game. You understand the premises of how games work and all that. You're trying to make your first one. So imagine you got a team that you have to pay. Now, imagine you have to. Uh, where am I going with this? Pay them for the difficulty and time they have to spend on coding and all that for the game and drawing, and whatever. And you can look at the cost, you can see that making a 1D game, meaning text based, just black background, white characters, or maybe you color it, maybe you you design it a little to make it more presentational, or whatever you feel like. You can see that it uses extremely basic code compared to the 2D game that uses some more complicated uh, code to show visuals, to show moving characters and all that and you see that it's going to take your employees your teammates uh some more time to make the game 2d meaning it will cost more for them to do that when you could have just had them make the 1d game uh at a much cheaper price than have it go on the steam market and see how well it does and uh, what is it uh, i'm not too uh worried about how people like the, uh, what's the word? <coughs> yeah, that's the word. Excuse me. The gameplay, like, the gameplay is just typing out what you want to happen. Like, the only thing I w would like for them to enjoy about the gameplay is that they can do a lot in it. Not too worried about the rest of the gameplay. All I want to know is if they actually like the idea of the game. If they actually like the idea of my psychological horror puzzle Zork reference, or not reference, but Zork inspired game, or Zork, Zork or Zork, whatever it is. I just wanted to like have a stepping stone to get an idea if I have the ability to make good games, if I can come up with actually good ideas and uh, incorporate them in a game that's playable. That's all I want to do. But he, I, I don't know if he understood that. I, prob I probably didn't mention that to him. I don't remember. I told him, well, like, what was it? He said it wouldn't sell that much. It wouldn't sell barely any. And I said, uh, well, yeah, it's an indie game. They barely sell a lot of times. I'm not trying to make a triple A game. I'm trying to make it tailored to the general audience. I'm trying to make something unique. That I would like, you know? I s and I... What was it? Yeah, I said... I just said that. That's a, uh... Indie game. They're barely, uh... Popular. Well, the unknown ones are, aren't popular, of course. The ones that are popular are very popular. At least in the PC, uh... Side of gaming. And he was like, yeah, sure, that's true. But, like, he didn't really give me too many, uh, reason for why my game wouldn't work. Like, there's one point where he says, uh, I think I've made my points. And I was like, what points? You, you just spouted your opinions on the whole thing. Like, of course, I spouted my opinions only as well. I didn't really show him the sources of, uh, why the games would be good. But I'm, I'm sure that I could have found reasons why they would have succeeded. Like, like how I mentioned how 
uh, indie games go from 1D to 2D or whatever, and like asking why wouldn't I be able to do that and not be successful like those people for that reason. Like, I, I believe I should be able to get some success from going from a one uh, dimension to the next. I don't think that should be uh, hindering me from uh, getting people to buy the game. Like, if anything's going to hinder me from getting people to buy the game, it is the actual game itself, not the whole going from one dimension to the next. Or are we out of time? 27 minutes? Oh, almost done. Another car. There's a truck. Man and reflector vest in his red truck. So yeah. What else? What else? What else do I need to talk about? Oh yeah, I like to say, um, hi Kelly, I love you. You're, you're, you're a very great girlfriend. You're very, very cute. I love you. Love you so much. I love you. My, 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 my baby. My agave. No, honey, I'm vegan. Gotta say agave. My agave. It's really interested in how, uh, that ramble about my old friend not being too supportive went on for a really long time, like, compared to the script I wrote. I, I guess that's because I, uh, didn't write the script to be rambly. I wrote it to be concise and to the point. Huh. Well, I do hope you enjoy the commentary about the whole ramble. Maybe, maybe I should just keep it to rambles then, and not do a script, but like, just, just write the general idea of what I want to talk about on the script, then ramble about that. So I guess if I wanted you guys to take uh, anything from my ramble about my friend, and what he says about the game, I guess, uh, if you, if you have someone, some friend, or whatever, try and create something, maybe, uh, to have your constructive criticism of it, maybe not talk to them about it, about, uh, how successful it would be, probably just, you know, what's the word? Uh, expire, promote, or whatever the word I'm trying to think of, their, uh, creativity and want to make something unique to themselves, like, like, my friend, I'm pretty sure he was basically trying to, uh, give me ideas or no, no ideas, he's just telling me what wouldn't work and what might work for a AAA game and not an actual indie game. Uh, which isn't something I'm interested in. I want to make a very unique game to myself, even though it's not going to be very unique, because like I told you, everything has already been created, and anything you create is just a variation on something that's already been created. But yeah, uh, encourage, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. Do encourage your friends, or whatever, and what they are making, any creative thing they're trying to do, be encouraging. Don't try to tell them that people would like something else better, unless they are trying to make something that for a general audience, then, you know, tell them their thing sucks dick, and that people like this other stuff. But if they're trying to make something that they like the idea of, that they're making for themselves, uh, yeah, tell them, Tell them to keep doing that. Alright, this video has gone long enough. Good, good.